Hello everyone, it's Sylvia here from Casino Library and welcome to Tangles on Tuesday. In this series, we're going to take you through the process of creating beautiful art pieces known as Zantangle. Hello everyone and welcome back to Tangles on Tuesday. Last week, the two tangles that we learnt were rain, this fabulous tangle here that reminds me of lightning, and we learnt betweed, this tangle here which is very, very effective. Very simple tangles again, but very effective when you're working with them. And this was a couple of the variations I showed you with betweed. So having our lines quite close together and having our lines a bit more spaced and a bit more curved to show you the different effects. So I hope you've had fun playing with those tangles. So the first tangle today we're going to learn is munchen. Now munchen is based on random dots which we then use to form triangular shapes. So we start off, I have my 0.1 pen today and using my tile I'm just going to do random dots through my tile or the area that you're working on. Don't overthink it, just random dots, not too many, or we'll end up with some really small triangles. So that's what I've done to get me started. Now, I'm going to form a triangle using three random dots to start. So looking at the top here in this area, I'm going to join these two across here. And this was my third dot, so that will give me my triangle. So there we have it. So my next triangle... And I'm going to work off this one as a base. So I'm looking for two more dots to join up. Or it may even be one, as in this case, I've got a dot here. So by bringing my lines here and here, so I'm joining these two dots with this one, I'll have a second triangle. So there we have two more. So I'll go ahead and just do the next one. This time... I have a dot here and what I'm going to do is join it to here and to here on this triangle so it'll come off the side so each time you create a triangle they're coming off one that you've already created and your triangles will be all different sizes depending on how you've worked your dots on your working paper so a few more again it's really simple but that's what I love about Zentangle is the simplicity and the ease in which we can learn these fabulous tangles. So I think what I'll do next is I have a dot up here. So I'm going to join it back to this one. And that's going to give me a bit of an elongated triangle, which is great. So that's what you do. You just keep working your way through and joining your dots and creating your triangles. I'll just show you with this triangle here. I had a dot here and here that I've used and I've used just that one corner of the previously joined triangles to connect back to. So then my next one, if I draw a line straight across here, that's joining those two dots up. So as you can see here, I've gone ahead and I've joined my dots and made my triangles. Now, I've deliberately left these dots not joined. You don't have to join every single dot, as you can see here. I haven't joined these ones up, and I think it just creates a bit more interest. Where I've joined them around the edges he here, that's another option for you. But I just wanted something that was a little less structured, so this just adds to a little bit of free form with that tangle. So the next step, and still working with your point one pen, is to, in each triangle, we're just going to do some lines. And I like to decide which is going to be what I consider the top or the peak of my triangle. And I draw a line down to the bottom of the triangle, a straight line. And then I'm going to repeat that line, which we know now as an aura, and fill in the triangle working towards each corner. So working with this one here, so I've drawn a line from the top down and then I'm going to keep working from that top point, drawing my lines in, working towards one corner. 
turning my card and coming back and working towards the other corner. And that's the next step in completing the munchen tangle. And we do that for each one. And it's good to vary the direction of the lines. So this triangle here, this will be my top point and the base. So again, I'll draw a line from that top point straight down to the middle and then mimic or echo those lines working towards each bottom corner. So those triangles that are sitting either side, so here and here, this is going to be my top point. I'm going to take that so that I'll draw a line from top to bottom and then repeat those lines working out towards the bottom corners. So I've done that there and I've, I can see that those lines are all going in the same direction, which is fine, they can, but what I want to do is break them up so they're actually all travelling in different directions. It'll give it a totally different feel. So what I'm going to do is with this triangle make this the top and bring my line down and then the remaining lines working out towards the two bottom corners. So we'll do that so you can see what that looks like. I just like to get away from everything being uniform. That's why I've decided to change the direction of the lines in that one. So you can see just helps break that uniformity by all means if you like the look of them all going in the same direction so this would be the center and they would all radiate radiate out from there that's totally fine again it's your tangle it's your work it's whatever you like the look of no one's going to judge you there is no right or wrong at all so this one here i think i might again to bottom and look the main thing is don't overthink it don't try to create something that's uniform or exact because that'll defeat the purpose of your zen tangle and as we work those lines the ones that are all radiating out whether this was the top of my triangle here here and here you can see then that pen work creates its own shading or highlighting as those center lines radiate out and again here so what I think I'll do with this one is I'm going to treat this as the top of my triangle so I'm going to come down to the center of the bottom line and then radiate out so I'm going to keep doing a few of those just to show you what that looks like so I filled in most of my triangles now just to show you what that looks like and you can see that by changing the direction of the lines or in other words changing where the top of my triangle is to begin my lines gives you this really nice effect. It creates a feeling of movement as if that's spinning and radiating. So that tangle is called munchen and again just creating some random dots the further apart the bigger your triangles and just remembering that you do not have to join every single line or dot I've deliberately left these unjoined and I think it just creates um, a, a nice fresh feel to it so munch and have a play the second tangle I'd like to show you today is called squid and as the name suggests, it's made up of what looks like tentacles on an octopus or a squid. And we begin by making a series of just small circles, which will be the center of our tangle. You can make them a little larger. So they're quite uniform in size. Don't get this confused with tipple where we vary the size of our circles. These ones are quite uniform. So just as I've done here, so it's just a series of circles which forms the centre of our squid tangle. Now I'm going to start drawing a series of, we'll call them tentacles. Um, it's actually a flowery looking tangle and it reminds me also of um, the sea anemones, that, um, something you might see in rock pools or coral reefs. 
So to do this, I'm going to do just a loose looking leaf or, or frond looking formation. So I've done my three, six, nine and twelve o'clock formations. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to come in between those and do another one. So in each quarter there. It's just a loose form. It's nothing that's a definite structure. Again, whatever you find pleasing to the eye. So we end up with eight. Now I'm going to do the next set. And it's like the holly bar that we learnt back at the very beginning. Where I draw my next set of fronds or leaves, when I meet another one already drawn, I'm going to stop and then start on the other side of it. So it's going to look like my fronds are weaving through each other, lapping over and under. So just again, repeating that simple loose style of leaf, but we're actually going to bring it across the ones that we've already drawn in there. Just like I have here. So you can see I started here. When I came to this frond, I stopped and I kept going and came back through there. And we're just going to keep repeating that as we work our way around, filling in as many or as few as you would like to have in your tangle. There's no definite number. It really is just, once again, what you like the look of. So I've drawn in another one here. Again, stopping where I meet one that's already drawn, starting on the other side. And I'm going to just keep working my way around doing that. Another nice simple tangle. Really nice flowery one. I do like this tangle a lot. And once again, it is beautiful in its simplicity. So I'll just show you here what I've done so far. So working my way around, I have one that came here, came under this one and through the other side. Then I have this one here which I've brought up and I've stopped here where I meet one that's already drawn and I start drawing on the other side. This one here, this front here has gone under both of these and come back up through here. And then this one coming under and just keep turning your card. It'll give you a better idea of where you want to draw them in. And don't feel that you have to fill in all this space because that is where we will do the next part of this tangle is coming in between here. And just changing the direction of them. Some can be quite curved, like I have here. You can have others straight. Just mixing it up and giving it a nice natural feel. So this is how my squid tangle is looking at the moment. I've added in my fronds. And then what we do is we come in and we start to add our small circles. I'm going to call them seed pods. In the gaps that are between our fronds. So working them in through here, through here, anywhere you can see an obvious space between your fronds and that will also help to define those fronds a little more. So you can see where I've started that process where I've drawn in my circles here, in between the fronds here and here and then I've started working some up into these larger spaces here and we simply work our way around the tangle, adding those in, as many or as few as you would like. And don't feel that you need to bring them all the way out to the tip here. That's not necessary. It's a beautiful tangle. It, it has a flowery feel to it. I do like it. So we're just going to keep working our way around and remember to keep turning your tile. Surprising what you see 
when you turn it you realize what you may have missed with this section and just taking your time with that keeping those circles fairly uniform in size and trying to keep them not so much structured just keeping some movement happening within that as well as i said you don't have to fill in every gap but it is especially nice if you can see the gaps in between your fronds some i filled in my spaces here i've brought a few out towards the outer edge i'll keep working my way around doing that with that tangle so coming into here into here to these different spaces here so that's how my squid tangle is shaping up. I filled in between all these fronds with my circles. And yeah, I'm quite happy with it. I hope that you feel inspired from the two new tangles that we've done today, Munchen and Squid. Have a play. I'd love to see what you create. So please upload your tangles in the comments below. So this is the challenge tile that I left you with last week with the suggestion that you do betweed in this area here. So this is what I've come up with. I've done my betweed in that area as I suggested to you and I've just taken my thicker pen, my point four, and highlighted those initial lines that we drew in to begin our betweed. So the ones running up and down and on the end, corner to corner, those ones there. This is my rain tangle, which ended up completely different to what I'd set out to do. But you can see my three rain tangles here, one, two, and three. They were my three that I drew in initially. Then I echoed them, so I outlined them. And I kept doing that until the space became so small that I then just echoed the actual spaces that were left in between. Here, 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 and throughout. Then I decided on the outside just to do these smaller versions of the rain tangle. So coming in here and up through here with the tangle. So that's what I came up for that. I decided to use my tipple to fill in this part of my tile. So that's this section here where I've done my tipple. And this area up here. I actually decided to add an extra string so you can see that this area here I added an extra string in here and repeated the tipple and in here believe it or not this is batweed same as here but on a larger scale so I've done one here here and here so each time I turn my tile, because there is no right or wrong way for it to orientate, I get a totally different look, a different feel. So there is no right or wrong way to display your finished work. And you can see my back weed there. So I've done that deliberately to show you that that same tangle can appear on your piece of work more than once. And by varying it, a totally different look you nearly wouldn't recognize them as the same two tangles but they are so again just spacing my lines more and giving them more of a curve like we learnt last week so there you have it that's my finished challenge tile again love to see what you've created so please add your creations in the comments below So here's this week's challenge tile for you. I've drawn a random string and deliberately included 
this circular area here in my string which is where I would suggest you practice your squid tangle that we learnt this week. Now I haven't broken the rest of the area up. I'm going to leave that up to you to decide how you want to work that remaining space. I would suggest adding in another one, at least another one string somewhere through there. I'd love you to practice your munchen, which is the other tangle that we learnt this week. And again, I'm going to let you decide which tangles or other tangle you'd like to use along with those two. So I'm going to leave that with you. That's your practice tile. I can't wait to see what everyone comes up with. So I hope I've inspired you again today. In the comments below, you'll find a link to the practice sheet that I've been using here today. If you're unable to access these from your computer at home, we'll make some packs available. All you have to do is give us a call on 666 00 and give us a day or two to get those ready for you. That pack will also include some pre-cut three and a half by three and a half inch tiles to get you started. We also have a hobbies and crafts reference center, which is a part of our e-resources that are available on our library website. And remember, if you'd like to receive instant updates when new content is added to our YouTube channel, please click the subscribe button. Thanks for joining us here today and we'll see you next week for another Tangles on Tuesday.